They served our country with honor. Albany was a heavily hit area with COVID-19, so we want to do our part. They gave of themselves so we can live free. To forget them is just a disgrace, and we want to always keep their memory alive. They returned home and continue to serve our community. It's just life-changing to see how they go from fear to confidence. They are the men and women of South Georgia. If I had to do it over, all over again, I would have done the same thing. They are the heroes among us. I want to applaud the brave men and women who have answered this call to service. You are watching WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Montlick & Associates. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. That's the oath service members take before joining the military, and many take those promises home to the communities they're from. Thank you for joining us for this special presentation, Heroes Among Us. I'm Emily Forrester. Each month, WALB and Motlick & Associates recognize the heroes among us. We spotlight an active duty man or woman, a veteran or a fallen hero. This year was a little different. When the coronavirus pandemic hit Southwest Georgia, we watched all kinds of heroes step up to the front lines of a different kind of battle. A former Navy flight surgeon led part of that battle in Albany. Dr. James Black used his military experience to help save lives in his hometown. When you're taking care of of people that you don't know, you kind of have a more objective view than when you take care of people that you've known for, you know, 40 plus years. Dr. James Black is the medical director for emergency services at Phoebe. His hometown of Albany started out as a hotspot for COVID-19 back in March. You'd be surprised how much of the country's eyes are on what we're doing here down in Albany, Georgia. He learned quickly he would have to take care of people he knows fighting the disease. More than 1,800 people in Doherty County have gotten infected. More than 150 people have died. Not so much the number of patients that are positive, but the number of patients that are positive and symptomatic and really sick has, uh, has been very eye-opening. Dr. Black says health care facilities were forced to adapt over the past several months. Have we gotten everything right? Probably not. Have we learned a lot? Absolutely. But using his training from both medical school and the military, he continues leading a fight to save lives. This is not going to be a, a one or two day or even a one or two week thing. It's just going to be something to sustain, and we have to make sure the hospital is uh, resilient and sustainable. Sergeant Daryl Benton has spent seven years in the National Guard, including a tour in Afghanistan. He says the battle he and his fellow soldiers have fought in southwest Georgia hits home. Whenever there were storms or anything that hit Albany and the state got activated, I was there. Sergeant Daryl Benton Jr.'s hometown of Albany is no stranger to hardship and tragedy. It's like, here we go again. He came back from overseas just last year. He came straight into the COVID-19 and no one was expecting this to happen. He jumped in, serving on one of the Georgia National Guard's infection control teams. It's an invisible enemy. But it is an enemy because it's taking us out. Um, but at the same time, like all other enemies, it can be beaten. Going into long-term care facilities like nursing homes and personal care homes across Georgia to disinfect the entire building and testing every single resident in the facilities. You don't know who has it or who doesn't. Just like when you're going into Walmart, you don't know who has it or who doesn't. You have to treat everybody as if they have it. Sergeant Benton says while he knows this work is for the good of the public, his five young kids are always at the back of his mind. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Our fight is so important with this COVID-19. It's to make sure not only we are safe, but to make sure our kids are safe as well. Sergeant Benton was one of more than 3,000 National Guard members deployed across the state, leaving loved ones behind to save strangers' lives. I know Albany was a heavily hit area with COVID-19, so we want to do our part in helping uh, get people tested. In the weeks after the pandemic hit Georgia, the state activated several thousand National Guard soldiers, airmen, and state defense force personnel. The Georgia National Guard, as you know, has worked tirelessly to assist emergency response efforts across our state. 
They were split up into infection control teams, medical support teams, and others. We can't really see what we're fighting here, but what we have learned about this virus is it's somewhat of a bully. Uh, this virus finds its way uh, to the elderly and the infirm. Soldiers, airmen, and members. Major General Tom Cardin is the Adjutant General of Georgia's Department of Defense. He says the National Guard teams were at war with COVID-19. We've adapted to this fight and we're going to continue to adapt to it. So I think we're going to change as the enemy changes and we're going to take the fight to this end. And Governor Brian Kemp says the national recognition for the Guard speaks to their dedication to Georgians. I want to applaud the brave men and women who have answered this call to service, who are fighting the virus with every fiber of their being. A woman who learned the powerful skill of marksmanship now helps women feel stronger, even after times of feeling weak. Meet Marine Corps veteran Tori Branham, who helps those she's never met. It's been more than 20 years since Tori Branham joined the Marine Corps after graduating from Westover High School in Albany. She's exceedingly patient and, and very empowering. The former marksmanship instructor now teaches beginners not only to shoot a gun, bullseye, but how to handle it, load it, you want to put and there. unload it safely. Every time I turned on the news, it was just one woman victim after the other. She posted on Facebook and found dozens of women ready to bite the bullet and take shooting lessons in hopes of not becoming a victim themselves. I had a woman that came out. Um, she had had a gun held to her head and was counted down. I had another lady, she had had a bad experience, again, had a gun held on her, and she cried every time she pulled the trigger. Take shot by side. shot, she hopes to teach each woman to have faith Slowly. that they can protect themselves. It's just life-changing to see how they go from fear to confidence, and I feel like every time they pull the trigger, they're just, that, that um, spirit of fear is just the lessened. The Not the bullseye, though, targets in the background. In a similar fashion, Army veteran Jesse White now owns an archery range. An IED injured him in Iraq. Then archery became part of his life. Now he uses those skills to help other wounded warriors like himself. Make sure it's locked in good and solid. Welcome to this Jesse White's part. happy place. Draw the bow back, looking through the peep side in the rear. But more than a decade ago, as a soldier in Iraq, life as he knew it came to a halt. Several IEDs went off. Um, I was outside the vehicle. It blew me quite a ways. The blast left him and three other soldiers hurt. I spent over a year in a wheelchair. The Purple Heart recipient would go on to spend more than three years stuck in a hospital. I was mad at the world in the beginning and mad at, you know, what was going on. But he decided to take a step forward instead of looking back. He helped start the Wounded Veterans Outdoor Network of Southwest Georgia. The foundation brings in wounded veterans to hunt, showing them their sacrifices are appreciated. There's nobody, I don't care what the injury, what the, the disability is, that can't shoot archery in some form or fashion. Um, and to be able to give that to them is, is huge for me. Another nonprofit based in South Georgia brings together members of our special operations forces from across the country. It's a way to make sure they feel appreciated and get to have some fun away from the battlefield. I was a Green Beret, special operations did 20 years myself, and this is like my second mission. Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Dan Hammock joined with several others to start the Purple Heart Outdoors Tour to say thank you to military special forces operators. They're volunteers, you know, I mean, they're doing stuff that none of us would ever do. The nonprofit based in Edison does six free events a year across the country. It doesn't take much to try to get these guys to compete. I don't shoot primitive bow and arrow or shoot little, you know, 22 rifles, but, you know, we're competing as a team. The Edison event tests skills like duck hunting and bow and arrow. It's a time for, you know, us to get together, kind of take our mind off of what we actually do. Hammock says that's the goal, for them to unwind and loosen up. This is a way to bring them together and enjoy themselves and, uh, and let them decompress and, and really and show them the support that they need. 
These military members say they're thankful someone cares enough to put something like this together. If you look back in, you know, late 60s, early 70s, and the support that the Vietnam vets got, which was lacking, and now, like, you know, I go to dinner and someone buys my meal and people throw however much money it costs to put on this event, I mean, it, it's almost humbling in, in a sense. If I had to do it over, all over again, I would have done the same thing and just to ensure the safety of my family. That's, I guess, the main thing. It's in my heart. You know, I, I want to bring them home. I want them home. You're watching WAOB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Mondlick & Associates. We will be right back. Welcome back to WAOB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Mondlick & Associates. For many people who serve or have served, not a day goes by without thinking of their fellow service members who didn't make it back home. We want to remember and honor thousands who were taken as prisoners of war and thousands of others who, to this day, are missing in action. A motorcycle group in Alabama traveled to southwest Georgia to recognize service members who were prisoners of war and missing in action. The people seeing us coming through town with our van with the flags flying, they'll ask us what we're doing and why. They made a stop at the American Legion Post 512 in Albany. That's the whole purpose of this ride is to get people to understand we still have people missing in action. Thousands missing in action. Those are people that volunteered and wrote a check to the United States government for up to them, including their life, and they need to be brought home. Thousands more taken as prisoners of war, some who died in captivity and others who lived to tell the tale. To forget them is just a disgrace, and we want to always keep their memory alive. It's an order. It's loot. Through this display, their brothers and sisters in arms carry their memories forward. I don't care what war they were killed in, where they're at, we need to find them and we need to bring them home. Their families need closure. When a crisis hits at home, those who have served in the military are often among the first to take action. Just months after Justin Godwin got home from Afghanistan, the house next door to his in Berrien County caught fire. He stepped in to help save his loved ones and their home. My father, my grandfather, and all of them uh, served in the military, so it's just it's something I've always dreamed of doing. Justin Godwin got back from serving with the Army National Guard in Afghanistan a year ago. Once you get back, when you're still in the mindset of being deployed, I'm still trying to get back into the civilian mindset. Last October, he faced something he didn't think he'd ever have to overcome. Woke up to my mama just being all frantic saying, need, need to get out of the house, need to get out of the house, the house on fire. All she was saying was the house was on fire and the kids wouldn't get out of the bed. So just spraying down everything I could. Justin jumped into action to save his family and their home. Yeah, you could see the embers on the tree. We made sure that everybody was out first and then just started spraying down everything so they didn't jump over to our house. The fire was so big, we assumed that it would probably transfer over here. Sexton believes her boyfriend's actions to save their home make him a hero. He's got a big heart. He tries to help others to the best of his ability. If I had to do it over, all over again, I would have done the same thing to ensure the safety of my family. We was out there for several days in a super storm and uh, almost sunk. And we can do the things we do in, in our country with the freedom we have because we've got the men and women of the military watching our backs all over the world. You are watching WAOB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Mondlick & Associates. We will be right back. Welcome back to WAOB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Mondlick & Associates. Billy Davis will tell you he just worked on ships during his 22 years in the Navy. But his wife of 62 years tells a different story, one not only of sacrifice, but overcoming obstacles and helping others overcome theirs. This is my last one. Billy Davis enlisted in the Navy back in 1958. Being a hero, definitely not, well, I'm not a hero. He served as a sailor in conflicts including the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Vietnam War. It was an emotional time for his wife of more than 62 years, Margie. 
I just think about uh, the homecomings and everything that we had. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have three children and I was always gone when the children were born. But in the midst of his service, he checked himself into rehab. He was an alcoholic. I was felt like a drowning man. I lay in my bunk at the hospital and I said, God, if you're there, take me like I am. When he come back, he was a totally different person. After retiring from the Navy, he served on Pelham's City Council. Then he helped found the Mitchell County Food Bank. God has prompted my heart to do the right thing. Now the war may be over. The battle, though, continues. He was diagnosed uh, with Parkinson's in December of 2010. But this keeps this veteran going. If you ask him to do something, you better believe he's going to do it if he can. Well, if, if your heart's in it, that's what counts. When it comes to helping veterans, there are many organizations in South Georgia which make that their mission. A nonprofit in Cairo aims to help those struggling with life after the military. We looked at how dog tags is helping end homelessness among those who have served our country. Dog Tag Support System, or Dog Tags, is a veteran resource center in Cairo. They put their lives on the line and they deserve every little bit of help and respect we can give them. Since it was founded, the center has evolved to include a thrift store overflowing with donations. Anyone can shop or donate. The money goes to help veterans in Southwest Georgia. Whether it be homelessness, hungry, uh, high electric bill that they need help with, things like that. Because if we can be proactive on that area, we can prevent a lot of the homelessness in our South Georgia area are jeans for the women. CEO Pat Christopher says the items donated can help too. If a veteran needs clothes, he or she can come in and pick items out off the rack. He says he hopes their organization can help eradicate the problem of veteran homelessness, which he says is more common in this area than we're aware. Pretty much a hidden problem. These guys like to lay low, they like to be to themselves. They've basically fallen out of society. I got tired of seeing women victims on the news. You're watching WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Mondlick & Associates. We will be right back. Welcome back to WALB News 10's Heroes Among Us, brought to you by Mondlick & Associates. It's time to announce the winner of our 2020 Heroes Among Us contest. Each year, we ask you to vote for the hero who impacts you the most. This year, our voters chose Tori Branham, our October hero. I caught up with her to give her the good news. Congratulations, you are our winner for our Heroes Among Us contest this year. I'm excited. Yeah, it's awesome. Gun instructor Tori Branham says the coronavirus pandemic put a pause on her lessons, but she's back hosting classes, of course, with appropriate health precautions. She says gun sales have gone up, making way for more women who want to learn the ins and outs of the weapon, but also how to protect themselves in general. I want them to have think about a plan to stay 10 steps ahead of the bad guy so they never have to pull their gun out. Branham is planning more lessons for the Albany area later this year. She says she's hoping to add to the more than 3,000 people she's taught in hopes of preventing them from becoming a victim. I got tired of seeing women victims on the news and I wanted to give people a fighting chance, especially women. Branham will get her choice between a luxury staycation, a four-day cruise, a sports package, or a national flyaway. So once again, congratulations. Remember, if you know a man or woman who served our country and continues to impact their community, nominate them for Heroes Among Us. It's easy. Just go to our website, WALB.com, and click on the Heroes Among Us tab right at the top of the page. Fill out the form, and you're done and we'll continue to share these stories on the last Thursday of each month at 7 p.m. on WALB ABC.
WALB and Mondlake & Associates would like to thank the National Infantry Museum and Soldier Center and all the men and women that served in our armed forces. You are the heroes among us.